stinky britches, you got stinky britches. Stinky, stinky britches, you got stinky. What the hell are you singing, Cartman? This new song by Alanis Morissette, I can't get it out of my head. Stinky britches, you got stinky britches. Uh, hello, children, ready for lunch? Stinky britches, you got stinky, stinky. Eric, is there a problem? Yeah, I can't get a stupid song out of my head. Stinky Bridges by Alanis Morissette? Yeah, the Stinky Stinky Bridges. Children, did you say hi to Mr. Twig? Hi, boys, how are you? When is Mr. Hat coming back? I told you never to say his name in my presence. But we hate Mr. Twig. Mr. Twig sucks. Yeah. It just so happens that Mr. Twig is far more stable than Mr. Hat could ever be, so he's the better puppet now. He'd be better used as a coat rack. <laughs> How dare you! Come on, Mr. Twig. Hello there, children. What did you say? He's singing some new hit song. Eric, why don't you hear that song? It's all over the place, on the radio, in TV, everywhere. Well, I'll be sodomized on Christmas. What, dude? Children, I wrote that song 20 years ago. You wrote it? Yeah, back when I used to be in the rock business. And now it looks like some big record company has published one of my songs. Oh, I don't want any money. I just like to see my name on the credits, that's all. Then we should go to the record company. Find out the lawyer, dude. He tells me about this stuff all the time. Well, all right. Maybe I will go. I'll play them my version of the song. Stinky bitches, you got those stinky bitches. So you see, stinky Mr. Big bitches, Record Producer, got... Stinky Bitches was something I wrote several years ago. Hmm, I really see no resemblance between that song and Stinky Bitches by our artist Alanis Morissette. Huh? It's the same goddamn song! Now look, I'm trying to be cool about this, but you can't just rip people's music off. It's against the law. I am above the law! Mr. Chef, I'm afraid you leave me no alternative. We're going to sue you. Sue me? You stole one of my songs, and you're going to sue me? Yes. I suggest you get a real good lawyer. We'll have the best in the business. We'll get my dad to be Chef's lawyer. Yeah, and he's Jewish. Daddy. Mr. Twig. Ah! Mr. Twig! No! Who did this to you, Mr. Twig? Who? Now, just let me do all the talking, Chef. We're gonna bring these bastards down. Right. This court is now in session. Who is representing the defense? I am, Your Honor. Gerald Broslovsky. And representing the prosecution? I am, Your Honor. Johnny Cochran. <gasps> uh-oh. Why, uh-oh? Chef, that's Johnny Cochran. He he's the guy who got OJ off. Uh-oh. I need some help over here. Please help. I think he's got third-degree burns. Give the child to me. Is he going to be all right, Doctor? Uh... Is he going to live? It's a stick. Damn it, don't give me that medical jargon. Just tell me straight. Is it gonna be okay? And so on this 15th day of what is considered to be the most important trial of the day, Johnny Cochran has appeared to defend capitalist records. The question now is, will Cochran use his famous Chewbacca defense? What's a Chewbacca defense? I don't know. That's what Cochran used in the O.J. Simpson trial. God damn, I hate that Cochran guy. If he was here in front of me, I'd be like, hey, you stupid son of a bitch. You didn't, I'm, I'm gonna kick you in the nuts. I'm sure that would scare the hell out of him, Cartman. And so, in summation, ladies and gentlemen of the... Ladies and gentlemen of the supposed jury, Chef's attorney would certainly want you to believe that his client wrote Stinky Britches 10 years ago, and they make a good case. Hell, I almost felt pity myself. But ladies and gentlemen of this supposed jury, I have one final thing I want you to consider. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a Wookiee from the planet Kishik, but Chewbacca lives on a planet Endor. Now think about this. That does not make sense. Damn it. What? He's using the Chewbacca defense. Why would a Wookiee, an eight-foot-tall Wookiee, want to live on Endor with a bunch of two-foot-tall Ewoks? That does not make sense. But more importantly, you have to ask yourself, what does this have to do with this case? Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with this case. It does not make sense. Look at me. I'm a lawyer defending a major record company, and I'm talking about Chewbacca. Does that make sense? Ladies and gentlemen, I am not making any sense. None of this makes sense. And so you have to remember, when you're in that jury room deliberating and conjugating the Emancipation Proclamation, does it make sense? No. Ladies and gentlemen of this supposed jury, it does not make sense. If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit. The defense rests. Okay, then. Wow, he's good. In a teary-eyed courtroom, Johnny Cochran has just finished his closing argument, and as was anticipated, he did use the Chewbacca defense. Whether or not it worked is up to the jury to decide. How find you the jury? We find the defendant, Jerome Chef McElroy, guilty as charged. <gasps> Whoops. Whoop. Mr. Chef, you've been found guilty of harassing a major record label. The full fee of $2 million will be handed over within 24 hours. Do I look like I have $2 million? Well, you have 24 hours to find it, or else you'll have to go to jail for 8 million years.